welcome you again and uh, let us now discuss some more questions under this series that is a concept through questions series and the topic that I am going to discuss or rather the questions that I am going to discuss today are the uh, from the topic uh, called as bearings right. So, let us go ahead and as you know we ha I have already discussed with you uh, two three topics earlier. So, this is the third part of the same series from the machine design section. So, let us start and discuss some more questions from the, uh, the same uh, uh, that is uh, subject and uh, this is the first question for you. Uh, pretty simple and you all of you must be in position to interpret it properly and should be able to answer. Just go through it. Deep groove ball bearings are used for. You, all of you know that what is the uh, deep groove ball bearing simply I am having a bearing and this is you have used the balls you are having it is not symmetrical right. So, it should be symmetrical anyway this. So, you are using the balls over here and therefore and this bearing we call it as a deep groove ball bearing Conrad bearing we also call it right. And uh, for what purpose we normally make use of what kind of load it can tarry, uh, take. You know predominantly this bearing can carry the radial load. Radial load is perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. Shaft axis is this. So, when you are applying the load perpendicular to the shaft axis, it can easily ca carry that load. That you already know. At the same time, this bearing can also carry the, so this uh, bearing can also carry the axial load, thrust load, which is parallel to that shaft. So, if you have to give an overall view of this bearing, you will say that this bearing can carry a high radial load and moderate thrust load as simple as. Why moderate thrust load? As you know when the load will act along the axis of this particular bearing then balls will try to shift slightly because you are having the races over here, race over here, inner race in the outer sorry outer race in this, this is the inner race you are having the pathway. So, when you will apply the load this ball will try to shift along the axis. As you will try to shift then it will come try to uh, go towards the edge of that particular race and therefore, as it will try to go towards the edge then obviously, the noise will be generated and bearing may over a period of time may damage or may get uh, may fail. So, that is why even if it is like if it uh, gets shifted by a small amount in that axis that is accepted to us. That is why we are saying that it can carry the moderate amount of axial load, radial load in any case it can carry right that is how it is and uh, so if you see out of all these options heavy thrust loads only obviously thrust load to aapka jo hai, if you will apply the heavy thrust load then obviously these balls will get displaced axially and therefore it will they will be uh, come in contact with the edge portion of that bearing and therefore going to create a lot of noise and obviously over a period of time the damage will also happen small angular displacement of the shaft small angular displacement in what this displacement this way or this way whatever you call it. So, this small angular displacement see it can carry a very small amount of but see you have to choose the most appropriate one out of all these. So, let us keep it on hold radial load at high speeds it can carry radial load carry kar sakti hai high speed ke upar no issue ball bearings we can use at high speeds radial load carry karti hai that is okay this statement in itself is also correct. Combined thrust and radial loads at high speeds. Now, the most appropriate answer going to be this because not only it can carry the radial loads, it can also the carry the thrust load also and high speed obviously uh, because they are having the point, point contact. So, they can be operated at higher speeds also. So, the you have to choose the. So, that is why I said even a very small angular displacement can take place but not so that is why this is not a very very appropriate uh, statement but anyway if you have a doubt then just see the other statement also when you will see this statement you will come to know oh this is also correct. So, which one is the most correct out of all these this is the most correct that is how you have to see. So, do not go simply read one or two statement and you find one of the statement correct and simply take it. So, in these questions you have to find the most appropriate answer this is the same thing has been shown to you. Whatever I explained to you for example, when axial load will act this way let us say in this direction. So, ball will try to shift in that direction right slightly and if more axial load will act then this ball will try to come 
try to come in contact with these edges. If slightly it is getting displaced, no issue. That is acceptable. But if more axial load will act, that is why it will try to come in contact with these edges. These, these are the edges of these races and therefore uh, it may damage the bearing, right? So that is why we say high radial load and moderate amount of thrust load or axial load these bearings can carry. Let's go to the next. Which of the following bearing is preferred for oscillatory conditions or oscillating conditions? See, basically this is the factual information that you need to have. I will not go into detail of each and every bearing which is mentioned to over, over to you over here. But straightforward, I will go to the answer part of this question. Uh, oscillating condition. For example, oscillating condition, you have one example that you can just think of is uh, uh, this uh, rocker arm bearing. Rocker arm, I think uh, you may have, okay, in this question, the answer is going to be D, but let me just explain you why it is going to be D. This is the uh, needle roller bearing. I hope you may be knowing why we prefer needle roller bearing. Needle roller bearings mean length to diameter. If you see, its length is significantly higher than its diameter. It is similar like a cylindrical roller bearing. When we say cylindrical roller bearing, the only difference being that cylindrical roller bearing, you are having the diameter, significant diameter of that particular rolling element. But in case of the needle roller bearing, your diameter of that roller is very small. That is a needle. It is approximating like a needle, right? Not exactly a needle, but you can just simply imagine. That is diameter is less of that roller, of that cylindrical roller, diameter is less and length is significant. Now, where does it find the application? In the applications where you don't have sufficient radial space. Jo rolling element bearings hai, unki sabse dikkat kya hai? What is the major problem? You know, they occupy the radial space, significant radial space. So, in those applications where radial space ki constraint hai, in those cases you can go for the needle roller bearings because this roller diameter got reduced. But the load it can carry because again this is a line contact and therefore they can carry the significant amount of load without compromising the load. So, first is needle roller bearing you will select in those applications where you are having this. Uh, this uh, that means uh, you need to carry a significant radial load. Obviously, this is a radial load. And at the same time, you have the space limitation in terms of radial space because you don't have sufficient. In addition to it, and one more thing, so you know you are having inner and outer cage. For example, this is the inner cage, this is the outer cage and you place the rolling element in between. This is how you normally do. In these needle roller bearings, sometimes even you can just, you can just even remove the inner cage, inner race. You don't have the inner race. So directly what you use is, you directly use this roller on the surface of the shaft, right? Let's say this is a shaft, okay? This is a shaft. So you don't have inner race. That means in this case, directly roller, this rolling element is rolling on the what? On the surface of the shaft. Only thing in that case you have to do is that you have to harden the surface of the shaft in which the contact is being made. And you are having the outer cage. Or you have the outer cage hoga bearing. Ka. So you are having the outer cage only but no inner race is provided. So that way, one more significant reduction in the radial space can be, take place, right? So those kind of applications are also possible. So with or without race, and also since diameter is smaller, so th that advantage can be taken. Now here I have one specific application. For example, this is a rocker arm. Rocker arm, as you know, this is a, uh, this is basically a engine, okay? And uh, this is, uh, these are the valves that you can see engine walls, opening and closing walls. And how do you open them? You make use of the cam arrangement, right? Down there, you are having this rod which is going to cam. cam use kiya hai, right? And uh, something, these are the cam rods which you have used. And here you have used a cam, uh, this, uh, uh, this rocker arm you have used. Now this rocker arm can just swivel like this, this way. So it means this is supported over here. Yahan par agar aap dekhoge, ye, yahan par supported hai ye. So it can swivel this way. So when this cam rod will go up, this will go this way and it will push this particular wall downward. And then it will come backward that way depending upon the profile of this particular cam. So in this case, 
यू नीड टू हैव ए बीरिंग कहां पर सपोर्टेड है ये रोकर आम यहां पर सपोर्टेड है काइंड ऑफ यू कैन जस्ट स्पिंडल और शाफ्ट बोल सकते हो ये जो है यहां पर अंदर राइट right? उसके बाद सपोर्टेड है हेयर यू हैव यूज द बीरिंग ये बीरिंग है यहां पर अंदर यू हैव यूज द बीरिंग ओवर हेयर नाउ दिस बीरिंग बेसिकली स्पेस इज लेस राइट एंड ओवर हेयर यू विल गो फॉर द निडल रोलर बीरिंग एट द सेम टाइम इन दिस केस निडल रोलर बीरिंग यू डोंट नीड टू लाइक See, in one motion, what is happening is in one way it is going this way, and in the return motion it is coming this way. So what you are doing is, since you have used the sometimes in case of uh, these uh, needle roller bearings, sometimes you don't even use the those cages also to support these cages. That means uh, that bracket that you use to keep them in position. So simply what you are doing is you are keeping the rolling elements as it is over there without any cage. I hope you understand the meaning of cage. So that means. when in the forward motion when it will go this way then balls not balls these needles will move in their direction and while it will come backward then again they will come to this position so this motion is oscillatory this way and that way so in that motion the rollers will go forward and in the backward direction uh, when it will move backward that way then in that case they will co again come to this position so in such kind of application where the oscillatory motion is involved and you are not using like uh, uh, the inner cage uh, sorry inner uh, this race and directly let's say if you are applying uh, using these rollers needle rollers on that particular shaft spindle then obviously that uh, uh, this otherwise if you have the one motion in one direction only let us say so what will all the balls will gather not all the balls all the needles will gather in one position and therefore they will increase the uh, 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 friction uh, inside friction right so in this case since in one motion they are moving moving ahead and then when it will move by backward so again they are getting rearranged right so that is why uh, in those application this is preferred so hope you got the overall gist of this particular needle roller bearings why we make use of this so any such application where you find that oscillatory motion is uh, involved you can prefer the needle roller bearing and obviously you will not use in very uh, straight forward way everywhere the needle roller bearings you have to see the actual situation kind of like uh, space availability and all that okay let's go to the next one if bearing is designed just see have a look over here if a bearing is designed by the oh, sorry not designed designated by the number 305 it means that the bearing is of what now basically as you know we make use of these numbers to designate the rolling element bearings now for this to identify this you need to know the nomenclature part of the uh, rolling element bearings i will just briefly take you through that nomenclature part so that not only this but related to this any particular question is framed then you must be in position to answer so this is basically in standard jo nomenclature hai kisi bearing ko define karne ke liye rolling element bearing ko define karne ke liye so that is uh, we make use of a code numeric code normally and that numeric code basically consists of five digits so one i have simply taken as x three five digits we will make use of in order to define that particular bearing right now what is important for you this is basically international uh, uh, accepted code hai more or less across the board different manufacturers will use up this code only this specification only Sm small changes will be over there uh, across the, those different manufacturers but overall this is going to be the case now what you need to know over here is k digits what does what do these uh, particular digits stand for to pehli baat to hai you have to keep it in note five digits now we will start from the end and also when you have been given any particular number to identify that particular bearing you, in that case also you will start from the right side only so that correct interpretation could be made let's say i will talk about the last two digits these last two digits basically refer to the bore code bore code ka matlab inner diameter of the bearing right yahi hai na so you are having this uh, ye to ye jo inner diameter hai bearing ka ye kitna hai bore usko bolte hai hole ko bhi bolte hai bore to usko bolte hai bore code ki 
to specify the inner diameter what is the code you have used so that will be specified by these two digits at the end that is the fifth number pe or fourth number pe that means last two digits whatever the number is whatever the nomenclature is so and then when you come to the third one over here now next two if you will come we call them as a dimension series and in within the dimension series that means we specify basically two things one is like we say inner diameter aise bol sakte ho agar yaad rakhna hai isko to inner then next one third one is going to be outer diameter of the series outer diameter series that means referring to the outer diameter of that particular bearing right so so third number over here digit stands for the outer diameter that is referring to the outer diameter of that particular bearing outer diameter you know this top to bottom if you are looking at it this way and then next number as you move to that is a uh, from this end you are having the fourth number uh, sorry uh, fifth fifth uh, fifth fourth third and second number over here if you go that way so this denotes basically the width series basically width mean as you know bearing is going to have the width some width so basically depending upon the width you have given a certain code sometimes you also call it as a length of the bearing sometimes you can also call it as a height of the bearing but keep it in mind when we are talking about the width height or length that means we are talking about this dimension right so this will specify the width series and then finally is the number over here or the digit over here that will indicate the bearing type ki kaun si bearing hai kis tarah ki bearing hai for example a uh, deep groove wall bearing hai uh, this uh, uh, what is our uh, rolling element bearing hai spherical roller bearing hai right straight cylindrical roller bearings and all that so ye number jo hai usko uh, digit jo hai that is going to specify like so that is how the overview of this so let me just Uh, एक बार इसको सम uh, करने दो सो लास्ट टू डिजिट्स बेसिकली दे विल रेफर टू द इनर डायमीटर और द बोर कोड राइट नेक्स्ट वन इज गोइंग टू बी द आउटर डायमीटर देन नेक्स्ट वन इज गोइंग टू द विथ और द हाइट और लेंथ एंड द फाइनल वन ओवर हेयर टू एक्सट्रीम लेफ्ट पे जो है दैट विल रेफर टू द वट टाइप ऑफ बीरिंग वट काइंड ऑफ बीरिंग इज इट राइट नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड फाइव डिजिट्स गोइंग टू बी अपियर but many times this particular number will be missing kai bar manufacturer jo width series ko mention hi nahi karta hai wo number wo digit jo hai that will be missing so if it is 5 then it is clear you will all say okay you will start from the right you will say this this refers to this uh, inner diameter or bore code and this refers to the outer diameter but let us say 5 are there then obviously interpretation is clear mentioned clearly but let us say if it is mentioned only four digits then interpretation would be in some cases like there is exception so it means if the number is missing is then the number missing the, sorry digit missing would be the width series so let's say if you are having the only four digits it means the width series number is a uh, width series uh, that digit is missing right so that is how you have to interpret so that is why many a time the width code is not mentioned so if you have given the four only four digits only then there is high probability that width series not given that is how you have to interpret so these are some of the exceptions right let me just now take you to the ab isko jo specification kaise di gayi hai wo dekh lete hain ek bar fatafat now jo last digit hai for example ye jo humne kaha let's say koi because these are going to the digits let's say it is like 05 it could be anything like it could be 0504 or whatever or maybe let us could be 10 also it could be 15 also so basically when the code given for the inner diameter or the board is this way then what you need to do is if the that particular digit is greater than 4 4 or greater than 4 4 and above that means 0 4 or above then what you will do what you will do you will multiply that digits with the number 5 to get the inner diameter bore diameter of that particular bearing in mm to jo bhi dimension aayenge wo mm mein aayenge for example yahan par बोर कोड इज जीरो फाइव इट मीन फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड फाइव इट इज गोइंग टू बी ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम तो जो इनर डायमीटर उस बीरिंग का द इनर डायमीटर और द बोर डायमीटर ऑफ दैट बीरिंग इज ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम सेम वे एनी नंबर ग्रेटर इक्वल टू जीरो फोर और ग्रेटर दैन जीरो फोर सिंपली वट यू नीड टू डू मल्टीप्लाई बाई फाइव इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द इनर डायमीटर ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर बीरिंग सेम वे लेट्स इफ यू आर हैविंग टेन सो मल्टीप्लाई बाई दिस दिस इज द टेन 
So, because this both this stands for the both this stands for what? Uh, this bore code only, this is the bore code only. So, multiply by 5 and get the inner diameter of that bearing 50 mm. Same way 15 is the bore code multiplied by 5 to get the uh, inner diameter of that particular bearing. As simple as that. I hope you understood. So the same has been mentioned to you over here. That means 0 or 4 and above multiply by 5 to get the bore diameter in mm. Dhyan rakhna hai mm aayega. Third digit ki baat karte hain. Let's talk about that. That is the outer diameter series ki baat karte hain. So how do we designate? This is a designation for this. Basically it indicates the diameter series. Diamond, exact dimension, outer dimension nahi bataayega ye. But this is how we have given the uh, uh, this uh, interpretation for the code that is mentioned that is uh, referring to the diameter series that is the outer basically diameter series if it is one then it means it is extra light series agar do hai to light series hai three hai to medium series hai and four hai to heavy duty heavy series hai now it is also easy to remember see jaise aap bolte light se leke heavy tak to number bad raha hai so easy to remember so if you remember it like one as extra light to you so then I think you will be able to remember. Then uske baad extra light, light aayega, light ke baad medium aayega, medium ke baad kya aayega? Heavy aayega, as simple as that. So it means any, this digit basically refers to the, what kind of diameter series is that, right? What that particular digit refers to, for, corresponding to that outer diameter or diameter series. Let's come to the fourth digit from the right side. Fourth digit from the right side, that is the width. Again, for the width, we are doing the same thing, right? We are not mentioning the, mentioning the, exact dimension of the width rather we are giving the interpretation in terms of normal medium or longest over here if you see if it is zero then we will say it is normal if it is one medium two longest that means again this is something kind of interpretation let's say if this is zero so ye normal width hogi and agar thodi si aur hai to aapka ye kya ho gaya one hai to medium ho gaya agar aur hai to ye length kya hogi jyada hogi something this way Right, that way you can remember. It means again over here it is easy to remember because you are starting from zero from normal, then you are medium and longest. As and as I mentioned, most of the time, sometimes manufacturers miss this particular width code. Right? Instead of five digits, if they have mentioned four, then it means the probability that this is being missed. So this is the width series. Now let's see bearing type scope. Kisra bearing hai, ball bearing hai, deep groove ball bearing hai. Uh, cylindrical roller bearing hai aur spherical roller bearing hai to unke liye bhi humne kya kiya hai code diya hai to wo jo code hai that is the digit hai how do we mention that digit let's have a look over here fifth digit from the right specify the type of rolling contact bearing to ye kuch ek digits hain jo aapko yaad rakhne hain isko aap avoid nahi kar sakte particularly for this particular exam or these kind of exams because wo to factual information puchhenge to isme to agar aapne isko cram kiya hai to okay if you are not cram so at the last moment at least you should cram it and uh, so that at least next day you must be able to reproduce right ek do din pehle usko jo hai cram kar lo only then uh, you will be able to interpret right so see uh, 6 stands for agar usne 6 mention kiya hai to iska matlab hai ki ye single row deep groove ball bearing hai aur 7 hai it stands for single row angular contact ball bearing right 7 hai to angular contact ball bearing n hai cylindrical roller bearing hai then 4 hai double row deep row ball bearing hai tapered roller bearing ke liye 3 hai spherical roller bearing ke liye 2 hai right so ye jo kuch ek kya kehte hain aapke uh, numbers hain ya for example digits hain or maybe like uh, this uh, correct hai wo that you can make use of over here or ye interpretation aapko Pata honi chahiye, simply need to remember. So I have taken one example over here. For example, you are having a bearing which is given as a 6308. It is very clear that this standard notation is for our 5 digits, but it is only 4 digits over here. Or we have to start with the right. To write 2 digits, in any case, he has to mention. Write 2 digits should, in any case, has to uh, correspond to what? It has to correspond to your uh, bore, bore code. So bore code, what is it? 0.8. Hai. Uh, sorry, 08 hai, it means it is greater than 04 or equal to or more than 04. So multiply by 5. So this means the bore code or dimension is 540 mm. This is its inner diameter. What about the next? Next, mein jo hai, wo you are going to the, that is the diameter, outer diameter series. And 3 refers to, I had 
टोल यू एक्स्ट्रा लाइट लाइट मीडियम सो थर्ड कम्स टू मीडियम सो देख मीडियम सीरीज देखो मीडियम सीरीज एंड सिक्स ऑब्वियसली सिक्स स्टैंड फॉर वॉट डीप ग्रू बॉल बीरिंग सो डीप ग्रू बॉल बीरिंग सिंगल रो डीप ग्रू मोर अप्रोप्रिएटली अगर आप लिखना चाहते हो कंप्लीट डिस्क्रिप्शन लिख सकते हो आई एम नॉट रिटन कंप्लीट डिस्क्रिप्शन बट एनी वे दैट स्टैंड फॉर सिंगल रो डीप ग्रू बॉल बीरिंग Having bore diameter 40 mm and is of medium series. Width series के बारे में कुछ नहीं बता रहा है right? तो ये ध्यान रखना है आपने तो अगर four digit mention किए हैं तो that means he is omitting the width code. Same is the over here. Two जो है वो क्या है Extra light, light, light series हो जाएगी Deep groove है six है ये and that way, right? Sometimes it may happen that sometimes थोड़ी थोड़ी वेरिएशन आपको मिलेंगे समटाइम्स में हैपन दैट ही मे इवन ओमिट दिस आल्सो ये भी मेंशन नहीं करेगा कौन सी बीरिंग है डीप ग्रू बॉल बीरिंग है रेडी दिस सिलेंडर का रोलर बीरिंग है समटाइम्स दिस आल्सो ही मे ओमिट दैट से दिस इज आल्सो ओमिटेड देन व्हाट इज योर इंटरप्रिटेशन 308 ही लिखा है उसने व्हाट इज योर इंटरप्रिटेशन अगेन यू हैव टू कीप इट इन माइंड कि दो डिजिट लास्ट के तो आपने जो है विथ उसको जो है वो क्या उसके बोर्ड डायमीटर के लिए लेने ही लेने हैं तो अगेन आप बोलोगे क्या है दिस इज फोर्टी एम एम बोर्ड डायमीटर राइट एंड इट इज ऑफ मीडियम सीरीज बट कौन सी है ये कौन सी है ये डीप ग्रूव है कि ये सिलेंड्रिकल रोलर बीरिंग है यू कैन नॉट टेल देन सो दैट मस्ट बी स्पेसिफाइड बट दैट इज अ रेयर वेरी लेस केसेज वेयर यू विल स्पेसिफाई ऑन थ्री नंबर बिकॉज नॉर्मली यू नीड टू स्पेसिफाई सिलेंड्रिकल रोलर है कि डीप ग्रू बॉल बीरिंग है कि स्पेरिकल रोलर है तो नॉर्मली स्पेसिफाइड सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम यू आर गोइंग टू फाइंड इट एज ए फोर डिजिट बट इन सम ऑफ द केसेज गोइन इवन फाइंड दैट देर आर ओनली थ्री डिजिट तो सो कीप इन इन माइंड दैट विथ सीरीज भी मोट मिट होगी सॉरी हेयर विथ सीरीज इज ऑल्सो रिमूव एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो रिमूव सो ऑलवेज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द राइट सो दैट इंटरप्रिटेशन इज करेक्ट अब देख लेते हैं दो क्वेश्चन आपने यहां पर था ये सॉरी क्वेश्चन वॉज ओवर हेयर दिस इफ द बीरिंग इज डेजिग्नेटेड बाई नंबर क्या थ्री जीरो फाइव शुरू करें बोर कोड डायमीटर सीरीज विथ सीरीज नॉट गिवन टाइप ऑफ बीरिंग नॉट गिवन इट मीन्स जीरो फाइव यू नो मल्टीप्लाइड बाई फाइव दैट इज गोइंग टू बी ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम दैट बिकम्स अ बोर डायमीटर एंड थ्री थ्री इज द डायमीटर सीरीज कौन सी है एक्स्ट्रा लाइट वन से शुरू होते हैं हम वन एक्स्ट्रा लाइट लाइट मीडियम सो दिस इज अ मीडियम सो यू सी मीडियम सीरीज है बट बोर डायमीटर सी ओवर हेयर मीडियम सीरीज बोर इज ट्वेंटी फाइव एम एम राइट सो कीप इट इन माइंड हाउ वी हैव टू स्टार्ट एंड हाउ वी हैव टू इंटरप्रेट सो मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वट आई थिंक इज दैट यू गोइंग टू हैव द फोर डिजिट बट इवन इफ दैट काइंड ऑफ सिचुएशन एक्जिस्ट वेयर इवन दिस टू डिजिट आर मूव इफ थ्री डिजिट आर गिवन देन If you are starting from the right correctly, then I think interpretation is going to be correct. So the correct option is going to be the option D. Okay, so let us now see the next question. Here is the next question for you. To increase the capacity of ball bearing, a dash is provided to increase the number of balls in the bearing. Right. Now see. First, we need to see how basically. V accommodates the balls in the ball bearing. I hope you know. For example, if I am having a bearing, this is a ball bearing, right? This is a ball bearing, and uh, number of balls are, as you know, placed over here. How these balls are inserted? That is the first thing. So, like we take this outer ring and then we place the inner ring this way, something this way, and then what we do? We can manually. you can say one ball over here another ball over here another ball over here and another ball over here that way you can insert and then you can shift this ring in a ring and therefore you can uniformly distribute these balls over here like this way and then you can provide the cage this way so that so this is how basically the arrangement is done now if we insert the balls inside this particular ball bearing this way then number of balls that can be accommodated are limited by this arrangement whatever arrangement we are making jo bhi hai ek depending on inner and outer diameter number of balls gets fixed usse zyada aap dal nahi sakte now let's say if i want to carry a high load 
हैवी लोड तो नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स मुझे क्या करना पड़ेंगे इंक्रीज करने पड़ेंगे सो दैट द नंबर ऑफ बॉल्स टेकिंग द लोड रेडियल लोड इंक्रीजेस राइट सो टू डू दैट वी हैव वन अरेंजमेंट ऑफ कॉल्ड एज द अरेंजमेंट कॉल्ड एज प्रोवाइडिंग द नॉच ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर बेरिंग नाउ वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दैट लेट जस्ट लेट मी जस्ट गिव यू दैट description over here even the answer is also mentioned but don't worry so for example if you see this bearing we have provided the notch over here bearing notch over here and notch over here and so it means we can provide insert the additional balls from here right when we can insert the additional no uh, no then obviously gap will also get uh, the gap between these balls will also get reduce right and then finally what we can do is we can shift this like inner or outer ring we shift it so that this notch goes somewhere else and this notch remains for example if you see over here outer notch is over here inner notch is here so that if you keep it over here in this position then balls may come out there is tendency to come out but since you have shifted it so the tendency to come out will get decreased so that way this is the method that we are having to increase the capacity of the ball bearings by introducing the number of balls in the uh, bearing now see the question to increase the capacity of the ball is provided to increase the number of balls in the bearing grease collar doesn't carry any meaning but you could have doubt over here in these two options that is the filling notch and less gap you can say this could also be the answer less gap could also be the answer because if you say capacity of the ball bearing uh, to increase the capacity of the bearing less gap is provided to increase the number of balls in the bearings so yahan par aap gap bhi to less hi kar rahe ho so you will say this is also going to be the correct but see how can you provide the less gap you cannot provide the less gap until you have provided the filling notch aur koi tarika hai nahi aapko gap kam karne karne ka so if you want to reduce the gap between these balls so first you have to provide the filling notch so it means the most appropriate answer is going to be over here is the filling notch provide the filling notch then obviously that will lead to reduction in the gap because as you will go on introducing the balls the gap will also get reduced so this could not be simply if you will write if you will put it this way less gap that is not because you are having other option had it been the case that okay you had no this option was not over here there was some op other option was over there then you can say this was also correct but since we have to find the most appropriate and uh, uh, the best one out of all these then the correct answer is going to be the answer c let's go to the next one which of the following is not a correct statement dekho the balls in the ball bearing remains in the position due to centrifugal force centrifugal force agar aap कोई चीज रोटेटिंग है तो किसी चीज को उसी प्लेस में रखेगी तो है नहीं बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू डिस्टर्ब द होल सिस्टम सो दिस सीम्स टू बी इनकरेक्ट एज ऑफ नाउ लेट सी अदर्स आल्सो केज इज मेड हार्डेस्ट ऑफ ऑल द पार्ट्स इन द बॉल बीरिंग्स मे बी लुक्स लाइक लेट्स फर्स्ट ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई दो विच कैन नॉट आइदर बी या तो बिल्कुल ही वो वील से दिस इज नॉट द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट और लेट्स सी विच आर which looks like ki wo bilkul correct statements hain some of those statements are going to be so that by elimination you can reach to the right conclusion that is how you have to approach right so let's go to the next one spherical roller bearings have capacity for self alignment dekho ye to aapki jo kya hai this is the factual information spherical roller bearings jo hai wo kya kar sakti hai aapki you have provide the outer race curve portion provide kiya to aapka jo shaft agar kya ho halka phulka tilt ho bhi right misalignment ho usko adjust kar sakta hai तो ये तो करेक्ट है ये होना ये दिस हैज टू बी यू हैव टू नो दिस इन एनी केस बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग होनी चाहिए उसकी तो मतलब दैट मीन यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड इट रोलर बीरिंग हैव हाई लोड कैपेसिटी देन दैट ऑफ द बॉल बीरिंग फॉर ए गिवन ओवरऑल साइज अब ये भी करेक्ट है बिकॉज वो रोलर जो है वो लाइन कॉन्टैक्ट है तो द सेम लोड इज एक्टिंग ऑन द लार्जर काइंड ऑफ फॉर दैट लाइन वेदर इन केस ऑफ बॉल बीरिंग इट इज एक्टिंग ऑन ए पॉइंट That means roller bearings have the larger load carrying capacity. ये भी correct है. अब आते हैं इसके ऊपर. दो दो statements के ऊपर आते हैं. इसमें भी अगर आप देखोगे, the balls in the ball bearing remain in the position due to the centrifugal force. ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता. As you will go on increasing the speed, the force acting, centrifugal force will be acting on the balls, and therefore they, they will try to throw away. और उसको अगर बहुत क्लियरली उसका इफेक्ट देखना है तो आप यू कैन सी इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन द दिस 
spherical or uh, you can say ro uh, this uh, ball uh, 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 thrust ball bearings. So just see the effect. Answer bhi aapko pata chali aega rather you must have got the answer. But just have a look over here. Have a look. Ye axis hai right? Iski kaun si hai? Thrust ball bearings hai. Aur ye rotation kaise hai? Aise chal rahi hai. सपोर्ट कर रही है लेट्स से रेडियल लोड आपका या तो वर्टिकली डाउनवर्ड या अपवर्ड एक्ट कर रहा है सो so, जब ये रोटेट करेगा व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन टू बॉल्स दे विल बी थ्रोन आउटसाइड जैसे ही दे विल बी थ्रोन आउटसाइड इसका मतलब है दिस पोर्शन विल ट्राई टू कम इन कांटेक्ट विद दिस पर्टिकुलर रेस के एज इसके साथ कांटेक्ट में आएगा व्हेन इट विल कम इन कांटेक्ट देन ऑब्वियसली क्या होगा ये डैमेज हो जाएगा इजीली सो वी हैव लिमिटेशंस ऑफ uh like uh, operating these ball bearings at very high loads high load to use kar sakta hai bahut hi zyada matlab very high uh, speed ke upar when we go on uh, using these uh, ball bearings then because of this action uh, that uh, uh, the performance jo hai wo kya hoti hai deteriorate hoti hai right so it means straight forward way you have no other option so iska matlab this is the correct statement the cage is made hardest of all the parts this statement is also correct so all these statements are correct so only statement which is not correct is this and also you have to think of this way also cage kaun sa portion hai ye cage hai this is the cage this is the cage right this is the cage so because this is frequently in contact with the particular uh, uh, these balls which will be in contact with this particular this uh, which balls where balls are rotating randomly and are being retained by these cages then obviously wear action will take place and therefore you have to make them harder right so that wear does not take place so easily so sometimes if things are not very clear if you ap approach or whatever the basic knowledge that you are having uh, if you utilize that knowledge you can come to the conclusion so a is going to be the correct option let's go to the next the life of ball bearing at a load of 10 kN is 8000 hours and uh, if uh, it's life in hours to aapko diya hai ki life of ball bearing ek ball bearing diya hai to main isko i can take it this way it's pretty simple nothing special in it you see the solution part so l10 life as you know what is the l10 life ka jo formula hai as you know standard formula is the dynamic load carrying capacity c divided by load equivalent load which is acting over there and so when multiplied by million revolutions or whatever or 10 to the 6 revolutions it is up to you how do you write let's say 10 to the 6 revolutions or if you remove 10 to the 6 then it becomes a million revolutions now what i am doing is let us say if ball bearing because uh, yes so it is a bearing is same bearing is same but it is getting subjected to a different loads initially it is subjecting it to this 10 kN that means this equivalent load or p becomes 10 kN and the later stage it is going to subject it to the 20 kN then he saying keeping other condition same the what is the life in hours to us case mein jab 20 kN mein operate karunga to life jo uski kya hogi will it increase decrease obviously life jo hai agar aap load badha doge life to in any case is going to be life means number of cycle that it will complete before the appearance of first fatty crack to like agar aapne jo kya kiya load badha diya to obviously crack jaldi appear ho jayega to life waise hi reduce ho jayegi is case mein since all the options given are over here are less than 8000 hours so you have to calculate but kai bar agar usne galti se if uh, examiner didn't think about much about it agar usne option aise de di ki sari option is greater than 8000 hai aur ek option jo less than 8000 hai us case mein you don't even need to calculate you can directly get the answer right that way also you can think but anyway what i'm doing is first case le leta hu jisme ye same life hai l10 life jo hai main kya kar raha hu l1 likh raha hu usko when load was p1 and let's say p राइट सो लाइफ एल वन वॉज दिस लेट से अब मैंने लोड चेंज कर दिया तो मैं उसको कर रहा हूं इफ आई एम से लेट से इफ लोड इफ आई एम चेंजिंग देन लाइफ विल गेट चेंज सो आई एम राइटिंग इट एज ए वॉट विल हैपन टू द डायनेमिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी भाई बीरिंग तो वही है बीरिंग इज सेम सो डायनेमिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज फॉर द सेम बीरिंग डायनेमिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी विल बी सेम so c will is going to be remain same what i am going to find out i am i want to find out l2 agar main load jo hai p2 kar diya that is the 20 kN let us say then what is going to happen so 
you can write it million revolutions. I am simply writing, I am omitting this part over here. More appropriately, you can write 10 to 6 or million revolution over here also. What I am doing is, I want to find out the life in us. That means L2 I want to find out. So, L2 divided by L1 karra hume. What is the rating life? These are all, this is also rating life, this is also rating life. Only difference big is in the amount of load that I am applying. So, what is this value going to be? L2 I am going to do it. So, it is going to be P1 by P2 if I am correct. So, it is going to be P. So, rest you know what you need to do. So, 10 value is about 6 or million will cancel out when you will take this way. So, P1 is how much? That is uh, 10. P2 is 20, right. So, 10 by 20. So, what is this is ball bearing is so p is going to be 3 you know this is going to be this so i want to find out l2 so you can find it out and since l1 you know it is 8000 hours so it will go 1 by 2 and raised power 3 so 1 by 2 1 by 8 1 by 8 multiplied by 8000 hours 1 by 8 multiplied by 8000 hours so it becomes equal to 1000 hours as simple as that so, manually, pretty simply, you can calculate this. Okay. So, as simple as that. Okay. So, correct option is going to be the option C. Let us move on to the next one. Let us go ahead and uh, go through this and try to find the answer. So, is not it on the similar lines? Is not it on the similar lines? Only difference being that here you are having a two identical ball bearings. See, when you are having a identical group of bearing, for that rating life when we define and then dynamo load carrying capacity kya hoti hai? It is going to remain same. Either the same bearing, same bearing killer in any case it is a dynamic load carrying capacity is same, but identical group of bearing hai, right. So, in that identical group of bearing dynamic load carrying capacity is also going to be same. So, this case may be two identical ball bearings. So, let us say I am having this ball bearings. So, you can say P dynamic, uh, sorry, rating life for P is equal to what? You can find out uh, C divided by equivalent load which is acting over here is for P, million revolution. Same way, let us say if you are having Q, again, the bearing is different, so the dynamic load carrying capacity kya rahegi? same rahe because this is identical. So, this is also going to remain same. So, this is equal to this again million revolution. So, like we did the previous question on the similar lines, you can get the I want to find out the life of the bearing, ratio of the life of the bearing P, LP by LQ. I want to find out, so that means PQ divided by PP. Raise power P and since this is a ball bearing, so PQ, uh, what is that? 45. So, 45 by 30 kilo Newton and over here it becomes 3. So, you can just take it out. So, it becomes uh, 15. So, it becomes uh, 3 by 2. So, 27 by 8. So, this becomes your answer. That is the B is going to be the answers. So, either same bearing subjected to different loads, in that case also dynamic load carrying capacity is same and when you are having different bearings, but keep in mind different bearings, but we say identical bearing, right. So, apparently identical bearing, if you have then in that case, the bearings ki jo hai wo dynamic load carrying capacity ka rahegi, same rahegi. So, if that be the same, C is going to remain same and then you can get it done very easily. So, here is the next question for you. See this, this one and uh, try to answer. When uh, the shaft rotates in anti-clockwise direction at slow speed in a bearing, it will. So, these are the options that is given to you. So, I hope you know that you must have uh, studied about the hydrodynamic journal bearings. So, initially, when the shaft is let us say resting right 
let us this is a bearing and inside it shaft is resting. So, over here this is a metal to metal contact over here you are having the this uh, lubricant as you know uh, right here lubricant hai aapka. So, now what happens is when it starts rotating it depends upon what the rotation you are giving to the this particular shaft. Let us say if you give anti clockwise rotation. So, as it will start rotating because of the friction over here initially it will try to climb the surface of the bearing in the opposite direction right because as it will start rotating here friction resistance will be offered and initially as it will try to rotate it will be lifted not lifted rather because of the friction it will be it will try to climb this particular surface at low speed initially. So, once that happens and as you go on rotating it and since as you go on rotating it the fluid will be taken from one side and it will be pushed on this wedge portion and therefore, uh, the more and more pressure will be built up and then slowly and gradually it will be shifted towards the right at later stage when when it has generated sufficient pressure and it is moved to the other side then obviously as you know it will move with slight eccentricity uh, in the stable condition. But in that case it will be shifted to right. But when we talk about initially then initially it will climb on the surface of that base on the surface of that bearing in the opposite direction to its rotation. So, it means initially since it is rotating in anti clockwise direction. So, then it is going to shift to the right it will this position going to somewhere here that is going to shift to the right not right to the left on the bearing. So, it is will move towards the left of the bearing making metal to metal contact metal to metal contact mean initially there is only metal to metal contact only right at later stage when sufficient pressure is developed and then it is pushed towards the right this is the final position right you know that. If I draw the final position of this particular bearing then this is something this way. So, what is its axis? Axis of the bearing is this one. So, I hope I have drawn it properly if not then I can just make it little better something this way ok this is the axis of that particular bearing. But what about the axis of the shaft? The axis of the shaft will be how? It will be something this way ok. This. Okay, not a anyway. This so that means now the shaft axis will be somewhere here. So now this eccentricity it will be moved. So the, but this is at a condition when thick film has got produced because of the hydrodynamic action. So this is the running condition you can see. This is the running condition. this is rest right. So, so that means eccentricity you know this is the eccentricity that is get developed over here. But initially it will climb the the same is going to be true when it if it rotates clockwise if I say if it had it rotated clockwise then in that case again it will climb it in the opposite direction. So, if I show it to you then what could be the answer? So, you will say if I rotate it this way let us say. I am rotating clockwise then again this will try to climb the surface of this bearing in the opposite direction in this direction then it will shift initially it will move towards the right right then it would have been towards the right then this statement would have been right uh, C option would have been right uh, correct because it will move right and then gradually it will shift towards the left. Now this eccentricity is on this side in this running condition it will shift to the, this side finally and therefore this minimum film thickness that you are obtaining over here you will obtain it over here that is how you have to see. So, correct answer now you have got it. So, let me just finally draw it and then so that I can share it with you in the form of PDF. So, this is the same situation that we are talking about right. So, answer is going to the D. Let us move on to the next now. <coughs> 
in an oil lubricated journal bearing the coefficient of friction between journal and the bearing so he has asked you to tell this with respect to the speed and for that you need to know the mackey's observation with respect to the friction how the friction varies so this is the diagram that all of you may be knowing and you must know that how the coefficient of friction in the hydrodynamic hydrodynamically lubricated bearing bearings vary right when you talking about the journal bearing journal bearing simply is talking about that means he's talking about the hydrodynamic journal bearing right so that means this is uh, how is the observation something this way and this is coefficient of friction that you know we denote with f coefficient of friction on one side and on the other side you are having a bearing characteristic mu n by p this is the bearing characteristic right this value and so as you know if you keeping uh, uh, if you keep other parameters same and if you increase the speed let us say you go on increasing the speed then obviously if you see initially at very low speed the friction is very high because the metal metal contact takes place that we have already seen over here here also initial when speed is very low then obviously sufficient pressure will not be developed so metal to metal contact will be over there and when sufficient pressure is developed then that pressure will lift this particular journal up right so the same is the situation at the low speed you are having high friction because metal to metal contact as you will try to increase the speed then at such at particular speed at one particular speed corresponding to this point you are having the minimum friction okay and then as you go on increasing the speed further then definitely this again coefficient of friction also again increases that is the observation this is the actual observation by the Mackey brothers that you may be knowing right so this you need to know so now if you have that uh, in your mind then you can find out the answer that means out of this becomes minimum at an optimum speed that is this and then increases for the increase in speed so that means this curve he is talking about so this is the d is going to the correct answer in addition to it he can also ask you what is the bearing modulus bearing modulus is basically the value of the bearing characteristic corresponding to the minimum coefficient of friction where is the minimum coefficient of friction this over here in hydrodynamically lubricated bearing so corresponding to that the value of this particular mu n by p we call it as a bearing modulus so i can write it this value of mu n by p over here specifically we call it as a bearing modulus and normally we represent it by k notation could be anything but uh, you should keep it in mind he can frame the question based upon this also let's go to the next question and uh, here is the next question for you a journal bearing of diameter 30 mm supported in sliding bearing uh, supported in sliding uh, bearing has a maximum load of this and allowable bearing pressure is this what will be the length of the sliding bearing again the questions they use a little loose language but again this is a what this is a uh, journal bearings he is talking about and uh, you must know the pressure distribution in the journal bearings right so journal bearings mein aapki pressure distribution kaise hoti hai that you know agar maine yahan par draw karna something is is tarike se aapki dikhti hai right uh, sorry i didn't draw it very correctly but something this way to yahan jaise iske thoda sa is taraf jo hai wo sabse zyada pressure hota hai aapka right this way and then finally it reduces it means the pressure variation takes place within this wedge shaped zone also and somewhere here you are going to have the maximum pressure but when we calculate you are having two pressures over here we when we carry out any calculation over here in the hydrodynamic bearing we normally talk about the pressure p which is a average pressure within the bearing and not the maximum pressure maximum pressure is something different but we talk about the average pressure and how do we calculate the average pressure we say average pressure in the bearing hydrodynamic bearing we say is the load what is the load which is acting on this bearing divided by the projected area of the bearing and projected area means you know diameter let's say if diameter is projected this becomes what width and length of the bearing 
so that is what he is asking us to calculate over there so i will just remove it that information you already may be having and let me just take you to the over here so just see what is asking you to calculate general meaning is diameter is given to you and uh, maximum load also let us say if you denote that load which is acting on that bearing is 1.8 kilo newton what else the allowable bearing pressure p jo usne diya hai aapko average pressure within the bearing that he is talking about is should not exceed this value and what is the to be the length of the bearing so how do we calculate pretty simple pressure average pressure in the bearing is given by the load which is acting and the projected area of the bearing so that is the projected area is d into l so from here you can calculate i hope you know how to calculate the projected area of the bearing agar ye डायमीटर है बीरिंग का इसकी विर्थ लेंथ भी होगी कोई लेट से इफ आई एम नॉट प्लोटिंग इट बट अगर मैं इसको प्रोजेक्ट करूं इस डायमीटर को प्रोजेक्ट करूं यहां पर सो इट विल लुक लाइक व्हाट वन डायमेंशन ये आ जाएगा और जो लेंथ होगी उसकी वो क्या आ जाएगी दिस बिकम सो दिस बिकम द रेक्टेंगल जब मैंने प्रोजेक्ट किया इसको तो विर्थ किसके बराबर होगी डायमीटर ये प्रोजेक्ट किया मैंने एंड लेंथ ऑब्वियसली वट एवर द एक्चुअल लेंथ सो pressure into this projected area that becomes the total load that is being supported by this bearing that is how we talk okay so pressure so now i can put this value this is 6 that is given to you what is the weight load which is acting so can i say 1.8 into 10 raised power 3 or i can say if i remove the decimal i have left out so this becomes this much newton and what is dl what is d 30 mm so if i am taking this in mm then length also in mm rest you can just find it out length jo kitni aa jayegi isme length is going to be if it goes over there so this becomes uh, 3 3 10 and this becomes 10 mm so that means e is going to be the correct option right so these are the uh, different like uh, questions that could be framed from this particular section almost covering the whole of that particular topic even summer fell number also he can check with you oh, simply directly the formula what is the summer fell number and all that so just go through all these uh, questions and related questions so that is all uh, for today in this particular section so in the next uh, session i will discussing with you some more questions on the similar lines on the that is you can expect in the examination till then bye thank you